Hello folks, what you just saw is an example of animation with dynamic video mask and that's what we are going to cover in this video using Deform Stable Diffusion. Now what you're seeing in the screen right now on your left hand side is a mask video and the original video on the right hand side. Those are the two videos that we are going to use to complete this animation. Now, before we jump into the collab for Deform Stable Diffusion, one thing I should mention that I used Adobe After Effects to create my mask for my video, but there are other options out there that you can perhaps experiment with. I tried DaVinci Resolve. I tried Runway ML. There are many other options that's out there. But for this specific case, I used After Effects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, so we are in Deform Stable Diffusion version 0.5. I'll have the link in the description below. Now, the first thing that we do, we are going to start executing from the top each block. So when we first click on that first block, we should get a warning message like this. We just ignore and just say run anyway. So let it complete. And the way we know that it's completed, there'll be a green check mark right next to it. That's all good. So let's execute the next block. Now here we are asked to grant access to our Google Drive. So just click on that and find your profile and just allow. So then it will start executing again. Okay, so the model and output paths block completed without any issues, which is great. So let's move on to the next block, set up the environment. Just click on that play button. Okay, so the setup environment block is complete now. It took about two minutes. So that's great. Let's move on to the next block, Python definitions. So let's just run that. That's quick, that's all done. Now we are going to load the model. So let's just click on that play button. All right, so select and load model completed. Took about three minutes. That's all great. Let's just move on to the settings. And this is where we are going to have to tweak some of the parameters for our video animation using mask. So let's just go through the parameters one by one. Obviously for animation mode, for the dropdown, we are going to select video input. For max frames, I'm going to leave it at 1000. Now we can jump straight down to video input because the previous sections do not have any impact on video input. Those are primarily for 2D and 3D animations. So here, the first thing we need to do is just provide the path for our actual video or the clip. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you a quick trick. Now here is my file explorer and I have the files that I need. So one of the file is the actual file. So what we can do in this case, we can expand the folder by clicking on that folder button there, the icon, and then bring our file explorer. That way we can simply drag the two files that we need. Now, one thing you'll get as soon as you drag and drop the files, you'll get this message stating that they are temporary, they're going to be deleted, which only makes sense because we are not saving them into Google Drive, which by the way is another option for you. But here we're just going to save it for current execution. So as soon as we come out of this session, it's going to lose those two files, which is just perfectly fine for us. So just say, okay. So as you can see, it's saving that file into the folder here. Now the other file that I need is the mask file, which happens to be here as well. 
So let's just drag and drop it here. Now you can see one is our original file, MP4, and the other one is a master file. So we are going to need both. All right. So looks like both the files are here, which is good. Now what we need to do in order for us to replace the init path with the actual location for my original file, if I highlight that and click on the three dots, it's going to offer me an option to copy the path, which is exactly what we need. So I'm going to override the existing path for the existing file with my file. That's where my file is, which is good. Now for nth frame, extract nth frame, I'm going to change that to two. Why? Because I'm going to extract every other frame. I don't necessarily need all the frames coming back from my original video. Now, the next thing we need to do is to bring our mask file. So we need to check use mask video. You need to make sure that it's checked. Now, after that, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to highlight the mask video, click on the three dot and copy the path and override the existing man by pasting it as simple as that i think we got everything that we need here now we can just click on that run button for animation and your changes to the parameters are all saved this is all good so far now the next thing that comes is the prompt right and obviously we can ignore the text to image prompts we are not using that we are using animation prompts now i already have my prompt that i want to include i'm going to delete the other ones because we don't necessarily need multiple prompts here i'm going to keep it simple and i'm just going to have one okay so i'm missing that parenthesis here somehow i deleted that as well but i brought it back which is good so i have my prompt make sure that the prompt is similar to your video to get good animations back. So let's just execute that. It's taken, that's good. Now here, under run, let's just go through them one by one. The first thing that I'm going to change, and I'm going to change my image settings, the width and the height, I'm going to change them to, let's see what I need. Okay, I'm going to change them to 640 by 640. The reason I'm doing that is because I checked the aspect ratio and the size for my original video that I have here before I copied it over. And I want it to be somewhere close to that. So it doesn't have to be exact, but this is what I want, 640 by 640. Now we can jump next to the steps. And here I'm going to change that. Why am I changing it to a higher value from the default value of 50? I'm going to share that information with you right now. So what we did, we changed the steps and I'm also going to change, by the way, the, the scale to somewhat of a higher value, let's say 13. Okay, so I have the deform stable diffusion guide or the cheat sheet i'll have the link in the description for you and i have highlighted some of the description as to what those parameters are and what are they intended for so the first thing that we saw is the steps right and it was 50 i changed it to 100. here's what it says steps the number of iterations intended for a model to reach its prompt things to remember with steps Considering that during one frame, a model will attempt to reach its prompt by the final step in that frame. By adding more steps, the frame is sliced into smaller increments as the model approaches completion. Higher steps will add more definition features to an output at the cost of time. So it's a trade-off, right? Either if you have more steps, like in this case, I double the number of steps, Obviously, it's going to take much longer to generate or render each frame, which is okay because I want a better animation in this case, right? Now, let's look at scale. That's the next section. 
And what it says here with regards to scale, it's a measurement of how much enforcement to apply to an overall prompt. A normal range of 7 to 10 is appropriate for most scenes. But some styles and arts will require more extreme values. What they're also suggesting, below 3 is not going to work, and over 25, a value of over 25 for scale, may over-enforce a prompt, and that may cause extreme colors of oversaturation. So we want to avoid both of those. And because I'm using art in my animation, that's why it makes sense that I go a little higher than 7 to 10, and that's why I have a scale of 13. So that's that. Now let's see if there's anything else that we need to change here. Oh yes. So I'm going to change the name to something that I remember. And this is, remember, this is how, how the name is going to be in the folder created in your Google Drive, where all of the frames are going to get saved. So let's just call it test mask with animation. Simple as that. So we know exactly which is a folder that's getting created by this run. Now the next thing that we need to change, we need to change the seed behavior to fixed. Why, you may ask? Because for any type of video animation, if you want the prompt and the model to follow your video as it creates the animation, for video animation, you need to have it as fixed. So we are good there. Now keep scrolling down. The other thing we need to look at, and this is one of the most critical aspects of video animation, is to look at the strength. Now, I played with different types of strengths, and this is one, one area where you may have to do some testing. So you have to go through some trial and error to find out what may be the most suitable strength in your case for your video animation. So I ended up deciding that I'm going to get it closer to the actual video. By the way, the values could be between zero and one, one being 100% as with the video that you provide and zero being completely different from the video that you're providing, right? The animation. But I want it to be somewhere close to that, but not completely the same as with my video animation. So that's why I'm changing it to 0 0.55. So I think we got everything changed that we need. And trust me, once you start playing with it, before you know, you're going to get used to knowing which are the parameters that you need to tweak for video animation. So let's just run it. And this is where we have to be a bit more patient because it's going to render, first it's going to render all the different frames for input and mask videos. Then it's going to go through the steps and the iterations to create the animation frames. So let's just run it. All right, so one thing I wanted to show you as our execution continues for the run steps is as it starts rendering or rather extracting all of the frames for our input video as well as the mask video, remember how we gave it a name of test mask vid animation? It, it'll create that folder under AI stable diffusion and 2022 12 because that's the month we are in right now under your Google Drive. So if you double click on that folder, you'll see that the input frames subfolder as well as the mask frame subfolder, they're both created. So if we double click on input frames, you'll notice that there are some 134 frames for the video that we provided as an input. Now, if we go back in our mask frame subfolder, there should be the same number of mask frames. So for each frame, there should be a corresponding mask frame and the total number should match 134 and for that input is also 134. The reason I say that it's worth going back and checking because I've had some situations which is quite unique from my understanding where my mask extraction, the number of frames getting extracted was higher or lower than my original video extraction of frames. So you want to make sure they're the same, right? 
And I think that had to do with the way I created the mask video. So then I switched to a different tool and then I got the right number of frames extracted for both. All right, so once it starts generating the frames, every time it generates a new frame, you get to see it here. As we can see that I was expecting the pigeon and the lady being animated. That's exactly what's happening. So we'll have to let it run. Right now it's sitting at only five frames or six now out of the 134 frames that it needs to extract for our animation. And once it's completed, the only thing that remains is for us to create the video. So let's just touch base once this whole process has been completed. The run process has been completed. All right, great news. We just completed running the longest part of this collab, which is the actual execution to generate our frames, animation frames. So this is looking good. The only thing that remains at this point is to create the video from the frames. And that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to run this final block. Now, a few things to keep in mind. We have to uncheck skip video for run all. That way we actually generate the video. And depending on how long you want your animation video to be, you can adjust the frames per second. For the moment, I'm just going to leave it at the default value of 12. And one other thing we must make sure, we just uncheck render steps. And finally, we should change the max frames to 1000. So we pick up all our frames, animated frames to generate our, or create our video. So we are all set at that point. We just simply run it to create our video. And this part typically doesn't take as long because we already have our animated frames. We are just going to just execute this step to create the final video. Okay, so we have our animation. So I guess at this point, we can simply run it. So this is our animation video. Right now it's sitting at 11 seconds. Again, you can tweak or adjust the number of frames per second to change that. So it's going to keep running. I'm just going to stop it right here. Now, few ways to access your newly created animated video. You can either download it by clicking on the triple dot. It will download into your download folder. Alternately, you can get into your created folder. And in that created folder, right on top, you'll see that MP4, that animation video right in there. So there are a couple ways that you can access that. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a thing or two. And feel free to use that comment section below to share with all of us how your experiments go. And I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for taking the time to see this video. You have a great day.